Hey Chosen Girls, I am so very excited to have my amazing friend Kelly Steele here to talk about an incredible topic that we just love to talk about because we could talk for days about this topic <laughs> and it's about marriage. Mm -hmm. But we were catching up some before we started the podcast mm -hmm. because we haven't seen each other in three years at least yes. or, ma or more. Yes. And she's one of my besties yes. and I've missed her. Me too. We have missed each other mm -hmm. and we've been doing life and doing life at home. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That was a little stretch on the marriage too, wasn't it? Oh gosh, man! Thank God we like them. I know, right? <laughs> We're going to talk about that. Yes. <laughs> so, but I'm so happy to hear uh, have her here with us today. And if you don't know her, you're going to love her. You were going to love her. I mean, our ladies here fell in love with her the very first time she came because she's so real. Her and her husband pastor an incredible, awesome church in Arizona. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona, mm -hmm. and it's called Kingdom of the Valley, or mm -hmm. I just say Kingdom, Kingdom. because yeah. Kingdom Life. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that is the best name for yes. the church, right? Yes. Kingdom, yes. because yes. it is all about the Kingdom of God, and it is a huge church, multiracial. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what God is doing there and how it's growing, and she's always so real that she, I mean, it's kind of like, She's real and you're laughing, but then you go, ooh, <laughs> because she's giving you the word of God and this truth in the midst of it that if you probably weren't laughing or going, oh, that really hurt. Yeah. But that's how it comes to you. And mm -hmm. it's just amazing. And uh, I just can't say enough about her. When I mm -hmm. met her first at Casey and Wendy Trees yes. Church is where we first met. I fell in love with her yeah. and we're, I'm still in love with her. Oh, I love you too. <laughs> love you back. So I'm so excited to hear, have her here. Well, anyway, yeah. hear her. Yes. So we're going to talk today about marriage. Uh, and oh, she should tell you, how long have you been married? I've been married 29 years. Mm, okay. 29 years together, 31. Okay, that's cool. And uh, you should tell everybody how many kids and grandkids you <sighs> have. That's always important. I've got five adult children. My youngest is 23, then I have a 24-year-old, a 26-year-old, a 28-year-old, and a 30-year-old. Mm. And I've got four beautiful grandbabies. Yes. They're all, uh, three of them are four little girls, and another <laughs> little girl, 18 months old, a set of twins, and they have changed my world. Oh, yeah. I love like those grand grands. Oh, yeah. Grandkids mm. are the best. And she does some awesome stuff <laughs> with her grandbabies because she's got all these beautiful girls. Yes. So she gives them these princess parties. Yes. In fact, I remember commenting on a post you did mm -hmm. on Instagram going, I want you to give me a party <laughs> like that. I, I mean, they had the Cinderella carriage. Yes. It was yes. like, oh, my God. Well, we God. couldn't go to Disneyland, so I got ah. the princesses to come to our house. You brought it and, to them. and I brought them, had the ponies. It was ridiculous. <laughs> but it was a it lot was of fun. fun. And it was beautiful. <laughs> it was great. Yes. <laughs> and so if you've heard Kelly at all, you know, you if you know anything about her story, obviously when they first started out as a married couple, like most married couples, uh, it's hard. Yeah. It's tough. It's it was really very tough. tough. We were 18 years old and he was 19. So of course, being young and kids, it's tough. Yeah. We didn't know who we were as adults or young adults or who we were in Christ either. Sure. So we went to church, but had a um, form of godliness, denied his power. We didn't know who he was. Yeah. And so, you know, you've got, you've got that with drinking and arguing and fighting and, you know, him cheating and me, you know, trying to chase him with knives around the house. It just... <laughs> Didn't it? Didn't it was it was a bad. It was Thank a bad goodness situation. you didn't catch him with those knives. Thank God he was faster than me. <laughs> Amen. Look at the Lord. But it was it was a lot of turmoil, a lot yeah. of up and down, a lot of dysfunction. A lot of it we grew up with that we thought was yep. normal. Yeah. And um, we were just trying to raise these babies in Section Eight housing on food stamps, and mm. and that caused a lot of issues too. Um, of course, financial financially, issues. it was just the whole. It should not have been. Yeah. We should not have worked. We should not be here. We should have been a statistic, but God oh, is so faithful. So, yes. When you give your life over to him, he changes everything. Yes, he does. That is so beautiful. And you're so right. It's so good. Mm -hmm. uh, same way with us, you know, no example. Right. We just figure out, okay, figure, we're just gonna, not going to do, we don't know how to do it, right. but let's just don't do it like they did. Sure. Because we could end up like that. Mm -hmm. Divorce on both sides. Absolutely. Very dys dysfunctional. Yep. Um, just trying to figure out, you know, what we're doing. So, mm -hmm. and we didn't know. Thank God for His word and thank His mercy God for his and word. His and His grace. Yeah. And and so, um, thank God. You know, it, like you said, we could all be that. Right. And, and you and I, you know, um, 
we, we we grew up differently where, especially in church, therapy wasn't really pushed. No, it was not. You know, counseling, counseling was no. like, no, you don't mm-hmm. tell anybody your business. Nope. And I just bring that up. Thank God for the word. Oh, yes. You know, I, I'm for therapy. I'm for counseling. But the word of God, is it changes your life when you apply it to every area, even in your marriage. Oh, it absolutely does. If you don't, you know, people can go, well, what's the secret of marriage right. or having a good marriage? Well, first of all, there are no secrets. Right. It's hard work. But the number one thing I would say is you both being submitted to the Word of God. Yes. And get in the Word of God because I can't change my spouse. No. He can't change me. I can only work on myself. That's right. But what kind of person do I need to be? Exactly. What's going to be my example? Mm -hmm. Well, where am I going to find that? Is in the Word. It's in the Word. It's not from uh, the way my mom did it, believe me. Or my stepmom or anybody else. And if we haven't ha- hadn't had that and learning through that, you're right. Because right. they did not push counseling. Right. You did not talk about it. But the right. word is if you've got Christ has to be the center, but then you have to be committed. Mm-hmm. Whether he is or not, you are committed right. to doing what God says in his way. Yes. And you have to read it to know that. Yes. And that's like you said, biblical, that's biblical too. So yeah. when I minister to other couples, and I always ask them, where's the word of God in this? Like, where, where's the word? Like, yeah. what? And the answer, they kind of look at me blankly. And I'm like, I, I appreciate we can talk all day, but if you don't apply the word of God to your situation, it's not going to change. Like you said, yeah. well, he's not changing. Well, God's not looking at him. He's looking at you. Yep. So, yes. but yeah, but yeah, thank God yeah. we have the word, Cindy. Thank God, thank God. Because we are only accountable yes, for us. For ourselves. To, for ourselves. Right. Not anybody else, our husband, our kids, or anybody, even when you have kids and people go, blah, blah, blah about your kids. Well, you know what? I raised my kids the best I could, but after that, they all, they're adults. You've got yes. adults. I do. And guess what? Yeah. They're accountable, not me. Right. For what they do. And, yes. And their responses yeah. and their actions and behavior. You You're know, right? right? We yeah. have to leave it to God. Yep. And trust Him. Yeah. And mm-hmm. trust Him. So all we can do is that was a, uh, like I said, a revelation to me about God changed me. Yes. What do you need to do in me instead yes. of, oh, you know, he's doing that, he's Mm-mm. doing that, blah, 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 right. blah, blah. Right. Okay, God, work on me. Work on me. Just work on me and keep my focus on me. And I still do that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> 31 years later, me too. Yeah. Still yep, do it. Do. Well, you know, our first question I'm going to ask you is how do we like the one that <laughs> You love because, yes. you know, it's like you're married, but you should like that person that you're living with, yeah. you know, right? Yeah. I think a lot of times we are in relationships, we get so used to, I love you, I love you, I love you. But a love it, love is action. You know, love is patient, love is kind, you know, biblical love. Yeah. Um, and we have to love, but you don't have to like. That's so so true. I think the liking is harder than the loving because mm-hmm. some of us will love because it's commanded by God to love. So well, I have to love him because God says that. But... Love your enemies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and he's my enemy and right. I don't love, like I love him. <laughs> but I'm loving him, but I don't like him. <laughs> right. And that's what we have to do. And I don't want to live with him. <laughs> no. But I had to learn to like him. Yeah. Like being around him, like his company, like yeah. conversations, like what he's interested in and vice versa. Yeah. We begin to like each other. Like, I like the way you think. I like the way you laugh. I like what you think is funny and try to find those commonalities. And um, that's what really, I believe, has strengthened our marriage over the years, that we really, truly like each other. Like, we like talking on the phone. We like having conversation. We like sitting up at home talking to each other. We, we, we have great communication, and we just really enjoy each other's company. We're not roommates. And I think a lot of um, marriages end up being that you're raising the kids, you're paying bills, and you're just a roommate. You know, you're mm-hmm. compatible, but you don't like each other. So, so we really work on liking each other. We date every week, yeah. um, maybe one more than one time a week. Mm-hmm. And um, we, of course, we work together. Mm-hmm. We just really like each other. Yeah, y'all work out together. Yes, y'all we work do, out together. Yeah, you yep. do a lot of fun things together we as a do. family. You, mm-hmm. you know, you're Steelers fans together. Yes, <laughs> I'm praying. We need I a quarterback, but yes. <laughs> Steelers fans together. Yeah. And, you know, I see those things. You do a lot of things together, which is... Again, you have to spend time with that person and talk to them right. and and work on building like just like a friendship if you yes. have a not your husband. So, okay, I've got a best friend. Well, what if you say I've got this best friend and my best friend Kelly lives in Arizona, but what if she lived here and I never saw her and right. I never talked to her right. or we never hung out or we didn't go to lunch right. or we didn't I mean, how can you say she's my best friend? No, I couldn't. You, no, you couldn't. Because I didn't do anything to build that relationship. Right. You know, or send her a card or yes. send them a note yes. or send them a text message. Or you know? call when you want to 
a yeah. little. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, we, so you yeah. have to have somebody you want to, that you can trust to talk to. So that's oh, why we, we like each other. And couples, you got you got to like who you're married to. You know, yeah. that thing that you were attracted to before you married him, it was something more than just paying bills and having kids and, you know, well, we're together, so we might as well look the part. No, we want to like each other. Yeah, that's right. I, that's a good point. The things that attracted you to mm -hmm. them before you got married. Yes. So there was something, right? Absolutely. And it's like, then all of a sudden you get married and reality hits and you're yeah. like, oh. Yeah, yeah, because it's hard. <laughs> of course it is. I mean, mar it is. any relationship is hard. Just like you ex ex explained the friendship, that's, yeah. that takes effort and work. Yeah. But when there's maybe an offense, yep. if there's arguments, if yep. there's financial issues, or and that yep. could go either way. Yep. I know people that didn't have enough money that argued and that had too much money and argued. Yep. I'm thinking, man, I'd rather be on the too much money side. I know, me too. But that, you know, <laughs> they're agree. arguing over where to vacation. I'm like, really? Like, who cares? But Just, yeah. that, that's a reality as you get to know different people that that could be, a, a, the enemy will use anything to cause contention. Absolutely. And so, but you gotta even work through that and um, you know, laugh a lot. Yeah, and, and uh, laugh at each other. Laugh at each other. Yeah. and Laugh uh, at yourself. Yes, like t take it down a notch. Stop being so serious all the time. Yeah. And um, like 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 the one God gave you. Yeah, good points. I, I just love that, you know, and about spending time with each other and, you know, just liking them. Yes. And just working on liking them and yeah. finding the things that you like about them. I mean, we can all find things we don't like. Okay. Oh, easy. We could point easy. it out. All yeah. the time. I had a list. Did you have a list? Oh, yeah. Long Absolutely. Right. Long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But now I just, I just, yeah. it's now just... it's hard to find things I don't like. I think, and you get to know them. And I, even the things I didn't like, I like about them because that's just, that makes him him. Yeah, you're right. That's yeah. what makes, right? There's things. I, it's so funny. I'll laugh at things that, that like some kind of music, okay? Because Rick will like music that I'm kind of like, oh gosh because he's definitely this old rock and roller you sure. know and i'm just kind of like sure okay honey that's fine you go ahead and listen to that right yeah <laughs> yeah but that makes him him oh it does like and like, everybody knows that's ricky that's g deal. with the that's him with yeah. the, the old rocker right and i'll and i'll be in the bed and my husband will uh, you know two in the morning babe look at this and the phone's in my face and it's some lion attacking a monkey or something and i'm like <laughs> But he he loves that. He loves, I don't know why, but he loves watching that stuff and then shocking me in the middle of the night. And I'm like, I don't want to see that. But even with that, it's annoying. But I, I do like that about him because he just thinks it's amazing. And guess what? He wanted to share it with you. He did. Right? Yes. At 2 in the morning. At 2 in the morning. You could have picked a better time, no. but he wanted to share it with you. They always assume we're up, right? I know. They, Are, uh, they always assume that yeah. we're just waiting. Yeah. Are you awake? I'm like, uh, of course clearly. I am. No, I am. No. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. I know. Yeah. We we work at loving them. Yes. And so you do have to work. Like we said, marriage is work. It and is. you do have to work at loving them. It is. And liking them more. <laughs> yes, <laughs> liking them more. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. How important has faith been in your marriage? Oh, well, if it wasn't for faith, my personal faith, like we said, mm -hmm. my faith in Jesus Christ, right. we, would, we wouldn't have stayed married. I, I can honestly know that for a fact. And maybe we shouldn't have stayed married mm -hmm. because it was not healthy. It mm -hmm. was very unhealthy. And any woman that's in a relationship that's full of domestic abuse and drug addiction and uh, infidelity and adultery, I would never encourage you to walk all the way through that, especially if you know people might go to jail for long periods of time. That's not good. But that was my reality um, until I met Jesus. Yeah. And I was going to church but didn't know Jesus. Mm -hmm. I was in church, but didn't have a relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. I was hearing the word, but never applied it to my life. That's why when people tell me they go to church, I always say, well, what does that mean? Because exactly. I, I did that too. Right. And um, But I had a personal encounter at home with uh, where I actually felt the tangible love of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I finally felt this love that everybody was talking about. Amen. I finally felt literally Jesus hold me mm -hmm. and never felt love like that before in my life. And that's what I'd been looking for and trying to find it in my husband, trying to find it in a man. And you can never you can. take anything from a man. A man's natural. What you're looking for is supernatural. And that's so what good. God did in my life. So when I fell in love with Jesus at that moment, I got into his word. Mm 
Mm -hmm. I started reading the Bible. I started listening to other preachers on TV. I would be at church eager to learn about Christ because the more I knew about Christ, the more I knew about myself. And the more I knew about myself, the easier it was for me to love other people. Yeah. Because you begin to feel like, God, if you can love me with all my flaws and all my issues, yeah. then I can love everybody because everybody's so messed good. up. You get off that self-righteous, I'm perfect, oh, yeah. you know, mindset. And you think, yeah. man, I, I shouldn't even, I don't even deserve this love that Jesus is giving me. So if I can receive it so freely, I should be able to give it freely as well. That's so good. So it was absolutely faith that kept my marriage together, kept me together, kept my family together, and just walking by faith, not by sight, not looking at what it was before me, but speaking those things that are not as though they were, knowing that our marriage would be strong one day, that we would love each other in a healthy way one day, that we would be out of poverty one day. You know, speaking those things, we've got life and death is in the power of our tongue. Yes. And we have yes. so much power. We can really speak to a situation, literally speak to a situation, and it can change, not overnight. No, but it can. But you Absolutely. keep on speaking it. And this is yep. not just the power of positive speaking. No, no. God this, watch over yes. He watches over, over his, his word. word to perform it. Yes. You're it, speaking God's word right. as to what he says is what he says about your marriage or about yes. your husband or yes. about you as a wife. And yeah. it has to come to pass yeah. because it's There's, his word. It is his word. His That's promises right. are yes and amen. So yep. I started speaking those words and, and um you know, over time, over time, I gotta let people know because yeah. it might seem like it was, you know, a day, no, <laughs> no years, years. Time. And finally, um, my husband, who was raised in church, whose father was a bishop, who was running from the Lord, um, got into some trouble, and was facing 21 years in prison. But that moment is when he finally accepted Jesus. <laughs> he accepted his calling. And kind of like the thief on the cross. Remember absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Will you remember you. me? Yeah. Thank and, you, Lord. And again, thank God for his grace and mercy. Amen. But Amen. But from that moment, he changed his path. I was changing my path. And then our paths came together with Christ at the center. Oh, so it was just, so. it's a beautiful thing. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. Well, you know, I grew up, I mean, Rick actually led me to Jesus. Mm -hmm. I mean, I grew up and went to church too, but didn't know, have a personal relationship with Jesus. Right. And um, he actually asked me one day, this was after we got married. I mean, because I thought I was a Christian because I went, went to, to church. church yeah. I sang in vacation Bible school. You know, I tried to be a good girl right, right. because in my house, if you weren't, you don't know what would happen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they did nothing about time out. Forget that. That was not in those days. Okay? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, I mean, so I thought, yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah. I'm, you know, just like, okay, you're in the garage. You must be a car. No, no. not necessarily. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, he asked me and I accepted Jesus as my savior, but I had not received that love like right. you're talking about. Yep. And because I grew up in such rejection, yes. I just, uh, even though he wasn't rejecting me, but I took everything mm -hmm. as rejection, sure. everything sure. as rejection. Right. And um, everything, you know, if, if I wasn't being rejected, then I would do something to make myself be rejected because I felt so comfortable. Right. You know, I knew how to survive like that. Right. And so actually it was like you said, I, have an, I had an encounter mm -hmm. with the Lord Jesus Christ where I knew, mm -hmm. um, and I knew without a shadow of yeah. doubt that he loved me. Yes. And, yeah. and when I received that love and knew that, just knew, felt like I, like you, like you yeah. in the arms of Jesus, yes. him loving me, no matter, no matter. how bad I was mm -hmm. and what I had done, that he's loved me. Yes. That changed my whole life. It does. It does, right? It really that does. kind of thing, that kind of, when you know yeah. that God loves you, yep. no matter what. Yes. It, it completely rocks your world. It does. You know? And you can't really love your spouse. No. Or like them. Right. Or love anybody <laughs> until you've received that love. Right. And yeah. if you're having those kinds of issues, you might want to make, like with your spouse that, I'm having a hard time. Mm -hmm. You might want to know, God, have I really received your love? Because you'll right. never be able to get it, give it out, which you, you don't have. You won't. You won't. You won't. I tell people I get worried when people don't want relationships. Um, maybe because they were hurt or rejected or, yeah. you know, oh, I don't need anybody. I don't need a man. I'm like, well, you know what? To me, if you can't love others, you don't love God. Yeah. Because, and, and that's that's a hard you know thing to say. Yeah. But the, the, the true manifestation of love 
is accepting the love of Christ and yep. then giving that love away. Yep. If you've never accepted his love, it's impossible. Right. Because you won't yeah. love right. You'll, yeah. you'll be sabotaging, like yeah. you said, or and looking you know, suspicious and yep. everybody's out to get you and everyone. And no, that's not what it is. Yeah. I mean, the last thing Jesus said before he left planet Earth, you would think that's the most important thing. His last words, love me and love your neighbor. Right. Last yeah. things he said. Yep. Most important thing. Right. Love me. Love my neighbor. Right. I'm leaving. See you later. Yes. I'm leaving you. That's how the world's going to know me. Right. It's through that. It's through that. Yeah. You loving me and you loving others, it's which true. includes your husband. That, that includes, he's your neighbor. He's your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's right. He is your neighbor. He's your neighbor. He's in the room beside you. <laughs> he's in the bed beside yes. you. Yes. <laughs> he's your neighbor. <laughs> he's definitely your neighbor. Okay. Well, what uh, have been some of the greatest challenges in your journey? Well, you know, there's there's several, several challenges. I'll, I'll talk to after the fact that we've been in church now, we've been pastoring for 17 years. And probably one of the greatest challenges is balancing the role of pastor's wife to my husband. So my husband is my pastor, yeah. he's my boss, and he's my husband. Yeah. I call it the ungodly trinity. <laughs> He's three different people. And I had to learn how to navigate, maneuver, and know who's talking to who at what point. So we could be at staff meeting and he might say something that maybe was against what I was, you know, presenting. I and early on I would take that and be offended because I would take it from my husband. Oh, okay. Now if your pastor told you, you'd be like, Yes, pastor, you sure. know, whatever the vision is. Right. But when you're married, you know, I'm like, well, wait, that kind of hurt my feelings because, you know, I'm, I'm your wife. Yeah, or so we, we would be at home and he would bring up something at work, um, work related, but I would take it as a husband saying it. So now I'm upset yeah. with him of a work issue. I had to really learn, Sydney, how to, wow. who was talking to who and not get so caught up and um, know the roles. That's so good. So, the, and that was causing issues of in our marriage because you're getting upset. So he, we, we might have a disagreement at work, and then he'd come home trying to hug me, and I'm like, hey, um, get away. It's like, what's wrong? I'm like, well, you, you know, you kind of put me in my place and staff. He's like, yeah, yeah that was pastor still, but this is Reggie now. Come give me a hug. <laughs> you know, so I don't learn hard. how to, you know. Yeah. And so that, 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 uh, looking back, that, that was a challenge. Oh, that would be a huge challenge. It was a challenge. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we worked through it, of course, right. and by conversation. And honestly, I stepped down as executive um, probably back, I want to say maybe four years okay. ago. So I was executive pastor for um, about 13, 12 years. Okay. And um, I, I sat him down and said, honey, I don't want to divorce you. <laughs> I, I like being married to you. And, but I see this constant mm. condition, especially yeah. when there's issues at the church. Okay. Issues that people don't understand or know about because we're running a business. Yeah. And there, yeah. There, there's business issues. And so I didn't like bringing things home arguing. So I said, I right. want I want to step down. Let's pray about bringing somebody. It was in order. Mm -hmm. I didn't like quit. No. I said, let's pray about somebody coming in right. and taking over because I think my grace has lifted. Sure. That's hard too. To that is very that. hard for you to recognize mm -hmm. that and step out of that yes. place that you had been in for 12, since 13 years since you started. I had to gracefully yeah. say, I'm, I got to step yeah. out. And God is so good about a month later, our son came to us. And out of nowhere, Mom, I've really been wanting to know you the oh. role. I'm kind of interested in what you oh, do. Wow. I, we couldn't believe it because we, wow. we didn't tell anybody. Right. There's always a ram in the bush, right? Yeah, that's And so, so good. we then told my son what happened, that Mom wants to step down. And he's like, I'd love to do it. And he's been running the church for four years and oh, doing amazing. That's so awesome. I didn't even know that. Uh, yes. That is so awesome. My Isaiah is 30 years old. He's our oh, executive pastor. That is Doing great. phenomenally. That's so, so it's amazing. Oh, I'm so happy. I didn't even know that. That's so good to hear. Because <laughs> we, we haven't talked. I know. We this is true. Up. We got to catch up. Yes. We have so much to catch up on. But that is true is, you know, and I've had to work on that too is mm -hmm. because of being here and then, okay, take off that hat when I get home. Then it's yes. husband and wife relationship right. and not take church home no and work home or business on dates home. we will not talk about work uh -uh. no nope. and nope. it's hard because we're both creative and passionate and we love and it's so much of your life it's our whole life it's our whole life yes. because we live with each other we mm -hmm. do it all day it's our call yes and it is very hard it and is. we have faced that too and like oh no i'm not gonna mm -hmm. talk about that and mm -hmm. that's why it's like oh and we're not gonna take any text messages no while we're having our day yes. we're gonna put our phone up and we're not yep. reading emails. No, nope. no, 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 no. Mm -mm. Wow. Yeah. We're learning some good stuff, right, people? Yeah. Okay, girls, we're going to be better at everything we do, which yes. is our goal, right? Absolutely. Chosen women of God. Yes. So we're going to come back in the next segment and talk some more. So join us, okay?